Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you a quick and easy workflow for processing your drone shots in Luminar Neo. And we're gonna take my drone photograph from this to this. comes to processing drone photographs the most important thing you can do is firstly to shoot in RAW and secondly to process in RAW. This is a RAW photo image with a .dng extension that's the most common DJI extension and we can tell it's RAW because in the develop module here it's got a little RAW next to it and if I, if I go back to the catalog and have a look in the info section you can see it's saying we've got the RAW file open. It's important to do it this way because we get much more editing latitude and before we start processing the image just make sure you've got your histogram turned on up in the top here if you haven't click on view and show histogram this is useful because it enables you to see if you are going into clipping of the highlights or the shadows in other words where you've got no light information in the image it's not a good thing we're going to come to the develop module and it's important that we do this first because this is where most of the raw tweaks are made so i can see that the image is slightly overexposed and i'm going to leave that for the time being but i'm just going to pull back the highlights slightly and you can see in the top right of the uh, sky here that we're pulling back a little bit of image data. That's not getting quite so blown out. I don't really need to tweak the shadows because it is a slightly overexposed shot and the shadows are quite well lit. Okay, I'm gonna close light for the time being and come down to the black and white points. Tweaking these means you get richer colors and higher contrast and it's one of the best ways of dramatically improving the look of your photograph so so I'm going to tweak the black point now and if you keep an eye on the histogram up here watch as I drag to the left you can see we're increasing the tonal range this is a good thing so drag that slider down now you don't want to overdo things or you're going to end up with huge areas of black but if you look at the shot already can you see the difference that's made let's do a quick before and after early on so if I click here that's what we started off with and here's after and that's pretty much just by tweaking the black point now whites don't really need changing if I change that too much can you see the histogram up here in the top right it's already clipping I think in fact we need to bring down this area of the beach to pull, pull back some information from there but we'll tackle that in a later stage. All right, we're not gonna worry ourselves with curves. That's kind of an advanced tool. And we're gonna come down to color. Most people shoot in auto white balance when they're taking their photographs and there's nothing inherently wrong with that as long as you've got the raw file because you can change it afterwards. You can see that when the drone took this photograph, it decided that the temperature of the color was 4,938 Kelvin. And you can warm it up just by dragging to the right you know if that's the look you want i don't actually want that kind of orangey look so i'm gonna drop that back down to where it was i would like to remove a little bit of the magenta tinge that you can see on here because in the tint section you can see we've got 29 i'm just going to drag that very slightly back just to get rid of a few of those purpley hues which i don't think contribute greatly to the shot and that brings us along to the saturation and vibrant sliders now the way this works is you should do vibrance first and saturation second. And the reason for that is that vibrance increases the saturation of colors that are least saturated when you start out, whereas saturation just turns everything up. It affects all of the pixels. So what I do is I turn the vibrance up so it's increasing the saturation of the least saturated pixels. It's not as overblown an effect. I'm going for a natural look. I hate photographs that look like there's some neon acid nightmare. So I try and keep things natural. Vibrance is looking good. I really like the way that's looking. I'm gonna add a little bit of juice to everything. I'm just gonna turn that up by a couple of notches. That's looking really nice now. So let's do another quick before and after to see where we are at this stage in the game. Here's where we started. 
and here's where we are now looking pretty good ain't it but we ain't finished yet now there's one thing that you should do at the outset of most raw editing photos and that is to turn on the distortion correction however i deliberately didn't do that in this shot because i liked the distortion and this is a choice you can make you don't have to apply these changes i'll show you what happens if i turn it on you can see we've got auto distortion correction and what this does is it looks at the lens profile for my uh drone which in this case was my old phantom 4 and that's got quite kind of a bowl shaped lens on it and when i click this it will remove that from the image so you can see we've kind of flattened out slightly and I actually prefer it untweaked if you have an image with a lot of dynamic range which is something like sunset or sunrise one thing you may want to enable is the auto fix chromatic aberrations what that does very quickly is you know you get those green and red kind of outlines around like structures in your image around the edge of trees and things like that those are chromatic aberrations now that's all I'm gonna do at this stage in the develop module so I'm gonna close that up and we're gonna move on to some of the AI base tools in Luminar Neo. Now the first thing to say about this is that some of these tools have the same effects as the stuff we've done in the develop module. In fact, if you're feeling a bit lazy or in a rush, you can just come straight to the enhance AI module, crank the accent AI up and the sky enhancer and then do the same in structure. But I want to have full control over what's happening in the images. That's not to say we can't add a little bit of secret source after the fact. And there's nothing stopping you experimenting, seeing how it looks, and then undoing it. So I'm going to turn the Accent AI up a little bit now. So I've turned the Accent AI up to halfway, and we can see what that one effect has on the image. So if I click the eye icon, that's before and that's after and you can see it's darkened the skies quite a lot and we've got quite a bit more clarity in the bushland here and it's not necessarily something i really want so i'm going to dial that right back down to about 11. yeah that's better so we've got just a nice subtle tweak to the clarity and some slight darkening in the sky so let's have a look at the sky enhancer i don't normally use this on daytime shots particularly ones with no clouds in them but i think it might add a little bit of something to it so we're going to tweak bring it up a bit darken up the sky slightly and accent those clouds off in the background so let's see what those two sliders look like together there's before and there's after coming down to the landscape module and there's a couple of extremely useful tools in here the dehaze tool is very useful at sunrise and sunset give it a little bit of juice there and it will make the colors pop and reduce any sort of mist or haziness you've got in the image you want to warm it up this golden hour slider is great i do not want to warm this image up i will tweak the foliage slightly again with all these sliders don't go crazy with them just give it a little bit try and keep things natural but we can turn this up slightly and if you watch the trees they will get nice and green i've turned that up to 17 here's what they look like now and with that off and on I might give it a slightly little bit more 22 yeah that's looking nice so now we've got this really nice contrast between the sky the uh, bushland here with all the trees in it and the turquoise beach now you know when I said I was gonna fix up the beach slightly and bring back some de detail in here I do actually like it quite blown out but I'm gonna come down to the professional section don't be scared of that word professional and because this is in the highlights what I'm going to do is crank up the contrast and keep your eye on the beach here I'm going to turn that up about halfway watch what happens can you see we got more detail appearing here it's not quite as mm in your face and blown out I'm going to dial it back slightly take that down to say 30 and I'm much happier with that. It looks much more natural now and not quite as blown out. 
While I'm in the Super Contrast module, I think I'll add a bit of contrast to the shadows just to bring back some more detail in the sea grasses here in the ocean. So watch down that bottom left section there as I turn that up. Can you see? We're bringing back some detail there and balancing the image slightly so we don't have this over dark portion down in the bottom left of the screen. So we've done most of the tweaks now. Let's have a little before and after. So here's what it looked like before. That was our basic raw image without any processing at all. And here's where we are now. Looking pretty bloody nice, I reckon. Now, one of the things to watch out for when you're processing your drone photos is that you don't get weird kind of aberrations on the edges of blocks of color. So for instance, if you go a bit crazy with some of the sliders, what you'll find is you'll get a kind of orangey glow or a green glow on this tree line where you're transitioning from the sky to the uh, the trees down here so whenever you're making any changes always just keep an eye on sections like that the transition areas between different blocks of color and light now before you save out your image there are a couple of other tweaks you might like to consider doing in the erase module there is the dust spot removal tool which will remove any blobs of color that got on the lens when you were taking the photograph. Not a problem in this shot, there's no dirt really present. But what I am gonna do is hit the old noiseless AI and I'm gonna go for a low noise removal on this. As you can see, Noiseless AI has cleaned up the sky quite nicely indeed, thank you. The old Phantom 4 didn't have the greatest camera in the world and used to get some sort of compression artifacts in the sky. And just using a bit of light AI noise removal has worked wonders. Now, depending on the shot, I might also use Numenor Neo's Super Sharp AI option, but not really a problem with this. I'm happy with the contrast I've got in it. And because this is a Phantom 4 drone shot and therefore not the highest resolution to begin with, it's a bit potato-y. <laughs> that was the problem with that drone and why I'm happy to have a Mavic 2 Pro now. But if I use Super Sharp on that, it will create a over sharpened image, which looks a bit too kind of HDR for my taste. So I'm going to leave it well alone. So there we go, guys. We've taken our ordinary look in drone shot with its kind of washed out look, the basic raw file from that to that. And the key, I think, with landscape photography is to try and keep it natural. I know there's this temptation to go crazy with the old sliders and create something that's really overpowering, but it just doesn't look natural. So there we go, guys. I try and keep things quite natural when I'm processing my photos. I will fully admit that when I first started out processing my photographs digitally, and a bit crazy with the old sliders. And once you've made all your changes, the final step, of course, is to export it as a JPEG or something like that. Whatever you want to do, saving to social media, then JPEG's your best bet. Get the quality around about 95 and save that out. Now, before we wind things up, guys, I would just like to make one comment about Luminar Neo. If you're editing your photograph and you decide that you went a bit too far with some changes, don't drop back into the module where you originally were because you'll see that all the sliders are set to zero and that's because it's kind of a layered change which you can find in the edit so to change anything you've already done click on this edits up the top here and you can see all the different tweaks you made on the screen here and if you come down for instance to the develop module then you can see the changes that we made here and you can tweak them accordingly so don't go layering your uh, edits one on top of each other because you'll only degrade the image quality all right guys that'll do us for this little workflow in luminar neo for drone photos do you use it or do you use some other photo processing software let me know in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed the video, please give us a like and consider subscribing for more photography related content in your YouTube feed. Till the next time guys, ta-ta.